<laughs> okay, so we're going to open it up to questions. You right here in the front. Yes. You feel that that means that you need to find a place to walk around? Uh, as far as, as far as, um, the way I am as a person with general taste, I would say my influences on the music I listen to definitely broaden my horizon, you know, as far as films with certain television shows and just clothing and everything in general because music is so broad and it goes down so many lanes and so many elements, you know? Like if I was the type of person that, like some of my friends, 1 a.m. in the morning, they're listening to hardcore rap, you know? And mm -hmm. at, at 1 in the morning, I don't want to hear that. Like <laughs> I want to hear a soft rock or like something more mellow, less 808 at a, you know, like, because music goes through mood, you know? Like I don't want to be that amped at night. So I definitely say the music that I was listening to growing up, help shift my whole life you know and I just want to say like I don't remember my mom ever playing music as a kid like my dad played all the music you know what I'm saying like yeah it. facts my mom used to listen like maybe like one Fantasia CD or like <laughs> or like one Usher CD because she gets an album she likes and she plays it for a year that is my yeah. mom is the same way facts. like <laughs> my dad had this big box like this big CD booklet that had like Hundreds of CDs, and now I think about it, none of them are really all the way. But but he had so much good music for. If it was nighttime, he would play soft music, and if it was morning time, it's no telling what it would be. And during the day, it would be a mixture. So it definitely helped me um, with everything, you know. Throughout the day, that's why I can't like, like certain people don't like music is a part of my everyday routine of everything because growing up, I can't with everything it was music hand in hand, whether it was school, whether it was right before sleep. I used to play music in my ears to go to sleep. Like every part of my every routine has something to do with audio. You know what I'm saying? Because my dad all day played music, whether it was all day loud in the house, and then we get in the car. You know, and then he bought me iPods, and then I had iPods, and I had PSPs, and I had everything. So I definitely did a uh, a big memorization, and maybe some songs I probably shouldn't have known so young, but <laughs> but uh, I was I was definitely dipping in all genres everywhere, which helped me be so open to life. Yeah. Okay, has he ever made like a song and he ran about you and you were like? Like, do you critique his music? Mm, not at all. Like, I haven't even, the new album, I have not heard, I think, one song on there I've heard. I just hear it when you guys hear it. <laughs> He's pretty private. Like, he'll go in the studio and he'll talk to, you know, his managers and his friends. But, no. My music's very mm -mm. vulgar. So yeah. So, I wouldn't. Yeah. Like, and we're still mother-son <laughs> relationships. Yeah, it's, so, it's some of it, I'm, I, I can't even believe he's singing about some of the stuff he sings about, like, <laughs> You did not get that from me, but you know you have to embrace it. He's a grown man, and it's what sells. And but a lot of people say, "Do you like it?" No, not really. But it's <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. So when you were writing your book, was there something that you put in the book that you had an issue with, like, "Well, maybe I shouldn't put this in there because it's too private," or did you have any songs about any of the content that you had in the book? Um, I did. A little bit of it. I wanted to be authentic um, and tell my story and try to tell it as timely as I can. Maybe I didn't hit every date note for note, but um, about 10 years ago I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and I don't know if a lot of people know that um, and so I did share that because I wanted to be able to um, touch that community um, as well as let people know what it looks like. Um, so yeah, there were a couple of things that and a couple of other things but for the most part I just wanted to be realistic and authentic and, and tell our story because you know a lot of times kids are 
you know, they, they say one thing and they do another one, but he knew what he wanted to do. And so I said, go to college. And he went to college and the entire time he was there, he kept calling me saying, I'm not supposed to be here. He said, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be rich. I'm supposed to be doing music. I kept saying, you'll be fine. Homecoming is coming. Go to a football game. He's like, no, mom, you don't understand. I am not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be doing music. But I really wasn't listening to that because I was hoping maybe he'd call me one day and tell me he met someone, he liked it. But every single day for two months, he'd call me every day and said, I'm supposed to be doing music. And finally, I just threw my hands up and said, I can't deal with this anymore. And then he called me and said, listen, they don't like me and I don't like them. I'm leaving. <laughs> and that was the beginning of where we are now. Finally, when I let go and just let him do him, that was when he was able to just flourish and become this big superstar. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. You can hear me, though. My name is Raymond Brewer, Jr. I'm a sophomore here at Clark Atlanta Theater Arts major. I'm from uh, Chicago. So I got two questions, one for Yadi and one for the mother. Um, you used to work with Juice World, and like, I just wanted to like, know what it was like to work with him because your music is fire, but Juice World was just from his just because he's from my city, I used yeah. to like listen to him every day. And um, the next question was like, it's a lot of like young artists that's going to jail and getting killed. And I was just like wondering, like as a mother, how do you suppress the feelings because oh. Lil Yachty is only 22? Right. Um. Um. Juice, he was. He was really, uh, he was a good kid, you know, he was really young, you know, and um, fame hit him really fast, you know, he, he blew up overnight and literally became like one of the biggest artists in the world, you know, in so short a time, and he had a lot going on, like just around him, he had a lot of personal things, and but he was really smart, you know, he was really talented, and rapping was something that he was extremely good at. He had a nice voice, he could sing, and and it didn't take him long, like, no matter what it was, it just, like it, it's like he just painted it, you know, like, I had never seen anything like it. Like, he's the first person I ever worked with musically that just literally, he made songs in one take, like he didn't stop. And then he would do it four times, and then he'd pick from each one, like, without stopping a song, and then he'd create a song, and the shortest time frame I ever seen. It was crazy, man. He was, he was, he was, he was really talented, man. You know, like it was such a sad situation because it was so unexpected. Um, yeah. Um, and my question, I worry about it all the time, but I have a little peace because, like, he did. It's a little bit different for us. Um, I think because he didn't come from the gang banging or, you know, anything like that, I get a little more peace. And he keeps his circle kind of small. All the kids that he hang with, most of them are kids that he was with in school. He's got a couple, some new friends, but they're p kids that I know. Like, we, I know his friends and um, a lot of the people he deal with, I know. So that brings a little bit of peace. I don't really have to worry about him, although people do try him. Uh, just like they try anybody else. I just hope and pray that he makes smart decisions because um, young people have to remember when you get in this business, a lot of the money that you're going to make, whether it be branding or uh, all that's going to uh, depend a lot on who you are. You know, and these big brands and these big labels deal with people that they know they can do business with and artists that they, they know are going to pretty much stay out of trouble. You know, that's where a lot of our money has, no, it's not that our, a lot of our money yeah. um, has come from in this industry. You know, he's endorsed a lot of big brands, and I think he's been able to do that because of his image, you know. Um, so I think a lot of where we come from has a lot to do with why I don't have a whole lot to worry about. I'm not going to say I don't have anything to worry about because I'm not with him 24-7, and I'm always going to be worried about him. But because of where he came from, I have a little bit more peace than I think like the average mom. My name is Yataj Deliza. I am a senior chemist from Bakersfield, California. Nice. And um, I also have two questions for each of you. Um, what do you cherish most about raising a child and when do you think is like the right age or right time for a black man to have a child? 
um, for both. Um, if 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 they not, if you're not using the 808, what what was you listening to that that didn't have 808s in it? Like what was the other sound? I don't even know what the last one. The, without the 808s, like what else could be put in place of an 808? Like what would you like sonically? What would on you? On the song? Yeah, on the on beat. Uh, between vocals and just instrumentation, so many things, you know. Um, I mean, a song doesn't have to have a bass every time, you know. Like, th 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 I could, I could. <coughs> wow, that question was really awkward. It's <laughs> like, there's so many genres out of hip hop, you know. Like, there's music literally just, uh, just, just voices, you know, just people's voice, you know. Because some people's voices are instruments, you know. There's, or, uh, or there's literally jazz that has no vocals at all. You know, that is literally just instruments. So, I mean, it's so many different ways. You know, music is art and it's whatever you make it. Some people, like, my best friend made a song with car noises, you know? Like, he made a beat out of a car driving, you know? Like, you can make, you, it's literally, you can do whatever you want to do, you know? Um, you know, the mindset that something has to sound a certain way is such a box level mentality. You know, to think a song has to have 808s or it has to have a drum line or it has to, it just doesn't sound right unless it has to, it's, it's, it's really, it's limiting yourself. You know, you have to, very, you have to be open to um, everything, you know, good and bad, ugly and beautiful, you know, to experience new things. So, yeah. And, and my question, let me make sure I heard you correctly. Did you ask me what is a good age for a black man to have a child? I asked you what did you cherish the most about raising a child? Okay. The second part of it is when do you think is the right time and the right age for a black man to raise a child? Oh, gosh. Um, what did I cherish most? Uh, probably what I could teach them. Um, you know, introducing them to Christ, bring, taking them to church, teaching them how a wrong, right and wrong, teaching them different life lessons. You know, I always, and I may skip around, so y'all bring me back to that second part two question. But like, I always tried to teach lessons. Like I told, I don't know if you guys know the story about how I told Miles when he got the interview at McDonald's and he had the hair and I was like, you gotta cut your hair. First impression is the best impression. And he was like, oh God, here we go. And so I talked him into cutting his hair. And so he went to McDonald's and he got there and he did get the job and he was like, oh my God, I hate this job. I can't believe people really work there and pay their bills. And I was like, yeah, people really work there and pay their bills and he quit. And so when he quit McDonald's, he was like, okay, so now I cut my hair. What the hell am I supposed to do now? I mean, that was, that was my, <laughs> well, he got fired. That was, that was my image. What am I supposed to do now? And I was like, well, hell, I don't know, dye your hair red. And the next day it was red. And so that's how we got to that. But go, going back to the lesson of, you know, even if it is McDonald's, I always tried to teach both of them, don't quit a job till you get a new job. Um, just life lessons to carry on forever and ever. And I still try to do that with what he does now. You know, like even dealing um, with, with the different brands, if they need you to post this, let's post it, let's get it posted on time. So I've always tried to instill lessons in them that will last forever, no matter how wealthy or how famous they get. So that's the part that I cherish, teaching them things that they can carry on forever. Always be on time for work, no matter if you like the job or not. And always be respectful. You know, a lot of, you watch a lot of interviews and a lot of people will tell you that he's very respectful, you know, because his dad and I've always, we brought him up like that because he's a representation of us. So we always wanted him to be, you know, yes sir, no sir, um, just be, a good representation of us, you know. So first off, I went to Clark as well. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Many, many moons before y'all. I had to. I had to. Yes. Okay. I just want to piggyback off what V said. Um, but I want to add something, too, that I think is a, a good life lesson for your age because you guys are at the age where a lot of you guys are going to become parents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, and, and, and it's not because you planned it. Yeah. You know, we got married, but we didn't plan him, <laughs> you know. So with that being said, I'm saying that 
we were married for almost how many years? No, no, no. I know we were married two years before we had him, but oh. how long were we married? Oh, 10. 10. So with that being said, she always, even after the divorce, she always allowed me to be in his life. She always allowed me to have dinner with him. She always allowed me to have uh, homework time. So when you raise a kid with love, this is what you get. Amen. Yeah, mm -hmm. Then the second part of that question about kids. All right, how you doing? I'm really strict mm -hmm. on that. Like, we talk about that now, and I talk to Miles because he wants kids. I mean, and I get it because he's... 22 and then my daughter's 16 and so I'm my the next kids that come into my life will be grandkids however I tell him a night of passion could be a life of pain because you really have to be careful with who you lay down with you know he's famous he's got money and a lot of girls just want to get the bag they don't really care about the baby we see it all the time so I just tell him just make sure that you know who you're laying down with because you have a baby with her you're attached to her forever so really in marriage you know my two kids were conceived in marriage I know it happens and everybody um, doesn't believe in doing it that way but I really would like to see him in a marriage before he starts um, bringing kids into the world um, will it happen like that I don't know but if it does not happen like that I hope and pray that it's someone that um, is not just there for the bag, you know, and that, that it's someone that can be a good mother um, to his child. So never until you're married. Like, I'm just like, that's just not acceptable. Because we have enough kids in this world with parents who are divorced or not together or, or don't even like each other. So definitely wrap it up <laughs> so that, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, so that you just don't have to deal with it. Okay, so one more question. All right, how you doing? Uh, my name is Amaya Richardson. Uh, I'm a senior sociology major at Morehouse College. Uh, my question is, maybe back like in 2016, I saw a documentary Yachty did with Viceland. He talked about his choice not to, you know, do drugs, alcohol, all that kinds of things growing up. How does, like... How do you feel like your choice to not do drugs has impacted your time in the industry? And also as parents, like, how do you guys feel knowing that you raised your son, you know, to stand his ground, keep his morals, and not indulge in those things? They didn't raise me to that. I was just me. You know, like, as a, as a person growing up, I, I, I just, I think, you know, be honest, I think I tried a few drugs early, and I realized it wasn't my thing. You know, at the, like, when I was uh, in middle school, like, I smoked in middle school for the first time, and, and it was it was creepy, you know, like, <laughs> like it was freaking scary, like, you know, and then like maybe a few times in high school and like, you know what my thing was? Like in high school, it was like, I was so scared of getting caught that like, I, I remember telling myself in high school, I said, all right, I'm not going to smoke until I get famous, right? And then I got famous and I think what it was and I, I understood marketing and branding so well, like how much farther I could get being this person that didn't do it, that I just kind of like, at 17, 18, 19, I was like, why would I mess up this lane of life? You know, like I had such an advantage on other artists because I was branded a certain way. Like, why would I even like, why would I even go on camera and smoke weed? And, and it wasn't even a thing like so much that don't do it. It was just more so like, why showcase that? Like, why make that such a public thing like why I got a gun I got like because guns are for safety reason in my mind I have guns but I would never go look at me I got this gun look I got this like it's not a it's not, I don't think it's a cool image I don't think it's something that should be portrayed like in a in a positive way I don't think that you know I think you should use things for proper usage you know what I'm saying as far as uh, protection or or whether it's medical use or whatever the case may be but I don't think flaunting and showcasing certain things, certain substances and certain ways of life are appropriate, just especially when you have a, uh, uh, audience, you know what I'm saying? But I never went, I'm not like a fake, like, hey kids, yo, don't smoke. Like, that's not <laughs> cool, you know? Like, nah, I just, I just, personally, for my personal, like, image, I wasn't gonna show it, you know? It's not my thing, you know? Like, but, I mean, you know, I, I feel like, bro, you, you know, you have to live your own life. You know, people can give you all the advice in the world, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. 
You know, no one can make you do anything in life, you know, so you're going to do what you want to do regardless, you know, so, yeah. Okay, so I have something for you. Mm Mm-hmm. This is from me because I really admire you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Here you go. I love flowers. Yes. I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming up. Thank you guys for coming out. Make sure you guys, where can they where can they find your book? The book is available today on Amazon.com, or you can go out in the hallway. I have it available for yes, you. If you're interested out. in the ebook or the audio book, you can get that on my website, which is RaisingTheRapper.com. Hey, guys, we'll give her and Lil Yachty a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.